Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today for this Spokane um, College Virtual College Fair. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Okay, excellent. Hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa, and I'm your, your facilitator for this session. Thank you again for joining us for the Spokane Virtual College Fair. Your camera and microphone are currently off. You're muted and your video is off, which means that our panelists can't see you or hear you, but they definitely want to hear from you. So um, you can submit your questions using the Q&A feature at the bottom center of your screen. Um, I highly encourage you to engage with our admissions reps who are here today and waiting to answer your questions. This is an opportunity for you to get more information um, and to get further information about the school. So uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, you know, this is one session as part of a larger uh, college fair session, and there's going to be um, further sessions that you could sign up for. So definitely check out the schedule and sign up for more sessions. The session will um, is currently being recorded, and it'll be available on strivescan.com slash Spokane. So um, feel free to check out their recording. We have an excellent lineup of uh, colleges and universities here this evening to share more about opportunities at their institution. And without further ado, we'll get started with Western Washington University. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get my PowerPoint up for you. One moment, please. There we go. All right, so my name is Julia Ide. I am an admissions counselor here at Western. I am our regional admissions counselor. So I'm based here out of Spokane. So that means I'm your go-to person if you have any questions as you're working through the admissions process. I wanna start off with sharing some general info for you about Bellingham and Western if you haven't had a chance to come visit our campus yet. We're over in Bellingham, Washington, about six and a half, seven hours away from here in Spokane. If you're looking to get further away from home but still keep in-state tuition, then we are a great option for that, so just keep us in mind. And Bellingham has a population of around 83,000, so we are smaller than Spokane, but there's a lot to do in town. As you can sort of see from that picture there, we're right next to the water. Bellingham Bay is about one mile away from campus. And then, then in the opposite direction is the Mount Baker Ski Area, so there are tons of outdoor activities as well as great shops, restaurants, theaters, plenty to do in downtown Bellingham as well. A bit about Western, so we are a mid-sized university, about 16,000 students, and 95% of those students are undergraduates, students earning their bachelor's degree. On the next slide, I'll tell you why I include these numbers, why they matter, so just keep them in mind. Average class size, 27, and 99% of our classes are taught by professors, so again, keep that number in mind. Going right into our, our academics, we have more than 175 different majors here at Western. So my best advice is explore those majors. You can go to our majors catalog. I, if anyone wants, I can put that link out there for you. So if you wanna see what's out there, look at the curriculums. That's a really great place to get some more information. You can see our seven colleges there on that list. I wanna just highlight, shout out a few of them here. First of all, College of Education, Woodring College of Education. Western started back in 1893 as a teacher's college, so that's really where our foundation lies. So whether you're interested in early childhood, elementary, secondary, special education, or educational leadership, we have a lot of options there for you. Huxley College of the Environment is another one I like to shout out here. Huxley College was one of the first environmental colleges to be established in the United States. So again, that's something else that we've really prioritized for some time, the study of the environment, sustainability, and how we can make both our campus and our communities more sustainable. One of the benefits of having a full college of the environment is that you're going to have multiple degree options available to you within both the environmental sciences and environmental studies. 
so you can find that program that's the right fit for what you want to do after college. Speaking of finding the right fit, last on that list, but definitely not least, is Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. And Fairhaven is unique in a few ways. First of all, they are our smallest college on campus, so it's a very tight-knit community. And what really stands out about Fairhaven is you actually have the opportunity to create your own major. So you're actually building your curriculum, working with faculty and an advisor. If you do have interests that lie in the intersections of multiple disciplines, or if you're interested in social justice and the law, I really encourage you to take a look at Fairhaven College, which also houses our Center for Law, Diversity, and Justice here on campus. On the second half of this page, I have popular majors. I do want to say though, popular doesn't automatically equal better. Um, all of our programs will have opportunities for you to connect with faculty, do your own research and projects. So keep that in mind. These are just some of the larger programs on campus. And again, if anyone has any majors they do want to hear more about, get some info, let me know. I can send you a link to our catalog. Oops, and I almost forgot, actually, I said I would tell you why those numbers mattered. I um, got ahead of myself there. So 99% of classes taught by professors, 95% undergraduate. Why do those numbers matter? Well, because we're an undergraduate focused university, that means that from day one, you have access to your faculty, many of whom have the highest degree available in their field. So you can go to them to ask questions. If you're having a little bit of trouble with the course material, you can go to office hours and get some assistance or even just chat with them about their research and see what their interests are uh, within research in their field. And 95% undergraduate. So you're not having to compete with graduate students to get that lab space, those research opportunities. You have that. So you can build your experience and skills while you're still in school so that when you graduate, you have a solid skill set and a strong resume. Student life and community. So like I mentioned earlier, lots of ways to get outside. And we do also have a ton of clubs on campus, more than 250, in fact. We also have some resources to help you be successful. So whatever school you end up at, make sure you take advantage of those. Those are there to support you. And there's no one size fits all to a successful college experience. So the best thing you can do is reach out to us and let us know what it is that you need so we can get you connected. Quick info about our application here. So it's an online application. You'll send us your transcripts, fill out your senior year schedule, activity list, and essay. We, oh, and I just see a typo there. It is not a $652 application fee. That is a $65 application fee. Just saw that there. So $65, we do have fee waivers available as well. And we are a test optional school. So you are not required to submit SAT or ACT test scores. Quick blurb on scholarships and costs of attendance, though I see I'm getting to the end of my time here. So you can also find this info online and feel free to pop in later on. We'll put Zoom links at the end. So if you want to get some more info on what scholarships are out there, feel free to stop by my Zoom meeting. And finally, I just wanna finish up with my contact information. So again, I'm your admissions counselor. I'm here to be a resource to you, help you in this process. So just reach out, let me know if you have any questions. And with that, I believe we are moving to Western Colorado University. So continuing with the Westerns. Thank you so much, uh, Western Washington for sharing. Students, I wanna remind you to feel free to use the chat feature to ask questions. Um, and that was the, the time from the previous speaker. So without further ado, um, I'd like to welcome Western Colorado University. Hey, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Brianna Clark, and I am a Regional Director of Recruitment with Western Colorado University, located out of Colorado, but I am your rep if you have any questions at all. So Western Colorado University is located in Gunnison, Colorado, so we are right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, basically surrounded by Colorado Adventure. We are within 45 minutes of two world-class ski and snowboarding resorts. 10 miles south of us is Hartman's Rocks, and we have over 750 miles of multi-use single trail uh, tracks for hiking, mountain biking, trail running, and so much more. And then we are 18 miles away from Blue Mesa Reservoir, which is the largest body of water in Colorado, and how our students have access to things like sea kayaking and many other water sports as, water sports as you're going. If you have never had the chance to try any of those outdoor adventure sports, or there's this particular one that you've always wanted to try, you can utilize our Wilderness Pursuits office on campus who rents out all of the equipment you could ever need for any outdoor activity, as well as planning some different excursions for our students to go out and learn some of those new skill sets. 
But along with providing our students some great outdoor recreation, we also like to call the land surrounding us in Gunnison uh, nature's best classroom or even our backyard. 80% of the lands around us are public land, which means our students then have easy access to hands-on application-based learning. They are literally getting their hands dirty as they are taking water and dirt samples and observing wildlife in their natural environments, as well as forestry, ecology, and other majors. This is especially important for our biology, environment and sustainability, and recreation outdoor education students. Western Colorado University is a small public university we have about 3,000 students in our undergraduate population, so our average class size at Western is 66. But we do guarantee you will never have a classroom with more than 66 students in it at any given time. That's our largest classroom on campus, and that's why we can make that guarantee for you. Our professors want to get to know you on a first name basis, and they're going to do that within two weeks of your freshman year. They're also going to know that you are coming from a little bit farther away of being out of state and are going to take a little extra effort to make sure you are finding your home away from home on our Western's campus. But they do get to know you really well. They want you to succeed in the goals that you have set for yourself, and they are available with office hours as well as extra time outside of the classroom to help you with those as well. We have over 100 different academic programs at Western, but our most popular ones include business administration, environment and sustainability, recreation, outdoor education, biology, elementary education, and exercise and sports science. And we are also growing in our STEM fields, including computer science and mechanical engineering. But our most popular major for students coming in freshman year is undecided, undeclared. You are going into our exploratory program because that's what you get to do, explore your options, find the homework assignment you actually want to complete, and then work with an advisor to turn that homework assignment into a career. There is um, something for everyone at Western, and it's not just about what's happening inside of the classroom, but also outside as well. We have over 50 different clubs and organizations and athletic programs on campus for our students to get involved in. We have uh, NCAA Division Athletics, Mountain Sports, Club Sports, and Intramurals, and then we have clubs that are based off of academics, art, music, and theater, passion and service, as well as our Multicultural Center and Wilderness Pursuits Office, who put on a lot of really great events throughout the year that our students look forward to. Um, these are open to anyone and everyone, regardless of your major or your background or demographic information or anything. If you wanna try the Knitting Club, go for it. Try the Knitting Club or any of our other groups. We are dedicated to the success of our students at Western. We offer disability services, academic advisors, tutoring, and career service to help her for, prepare for that job after high school or after graduating. Uh, but we also have our EPIC mentors. EPIC stands for Experienced Peers Initiating Connections. They are upperclassmen students who have survived freshman year themselves, and they want to share those tips and tricks with you as an incoming student. Every incoming student at Western is assigned one of these EPIC mentors for your entire first year on campus. Uh, they are there for you uh, to text if you need help, if you're wondering where something is located on campus, or they will also say that they're heading to the basketball game and see if you want to join them. Want to touch on affordability of Western, both my in-state and out-of-state tuitions are posted here on the screen. As you can see, they're both coming in well under the national average. If you are looking to go out of state and especially coming to Colorado, we are one of your more affordable options. 80% of our students are receiving some form of financial aid and 100% of our students are considered for an academic merit aid scholarship that's based off of your GPA which is here at the information I have on this screen. Um, if, as long as you have a 3.35 cumulative GPA weighted um, or higher, you will receive an academic merit scholarship. They start at 8,000 and go up to 10. Thinking back to my tuition on my previous screen, that cuts tuition um, by a third to a half, um, if not more, depending on which tier you are in. We also have a whole bunch of other scholarships that are available for you to look through and apply for as uh, fits what your demographic and your interests are. We absolutely want you to come on out and check out Western for yourself. Uh, campus visit is a super important way to connect with faculty and current students and see if the location is meant for you. You can go to western.edu slash visit at any point to see our preview days and individual visits and sign up for those. But if virtual is still where you are comfortable, you can go to western.edu slash recruitment events to see what virtual presentation and webinars we have coming up. It is easy to apply to Western. Uh, we are on a rolling admissions basis and you can go to western.edu slash apply. The application will take you all of 20 to 30 minutes and then whatever time you're spending on that Why Western essay. We are test optional here moving forward. So you just have to send in your transcripts, but we will, um, if you have your test scores, please send those in as well. Uh, they do not hurt your application. They can only help. 
We have a $30 application fee, but you can use the code GOWESTERN2022 to waive that application fee on either our app or the Common app as well. My contact info is here on the screen, but I will also send it through in the chat. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope you have a great rest of your evening listening to more colleges. Excellent. Thank you so much, Western Colorado University. Um, just a quick reminder to students, feel free to use the Q&A. Um, and now, uh, excited to present Seattle University. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Of course I am, thank you. You think I'd get it by now, but here we are. I'm gonna pop some of my information in the chat so you just have that right off the bat and we'll just get started. My name's Nicole, I use she, her pronouns and I am the admissions counselor for Eastern Washington. So if it's your first time applying to school or you're just interested in learning more about Seattle U or any of these schools here, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Just to get us started, I'm gonna share some kind of basic facts about who we are and what might shape your experience here at SU. The red border here is our entire campus nestled in the heart of the ever-inclusive Capitol Hill. What's really special about our campus is our connection with the greater city of Seattle. Although we are connected in so many ways, Seattle U's campus is truly an oasis within the city. Seattle U is a Jesuit Catholic university. The Jesuits were founded 500 years ago with the goal of a transformative and holistic education for each students, for each student, excuse me, which is what we really aim to maintain to this day. You'll see some helpful numbers here. SU is considered a mid-sized university. We have around 7,000 students overall. 4,800 of those students are undergraduates while the rest are a blend of grad and law students. All of our classes are 100% taught by SU faculty, so you won't be taught by any grad assistants or TAs. You'll find your average class size at SU is around 18 students with an overall ratio of 11 students to one professor campus-wide. At SU, our goal in the classroom is to empower purposeful leaders to serve the greater good. Um, starting with our direct entry program, Seattle U offers the distinct advantage of considering freshman applicants for a direct entry to specific majors. Accordingly, there are some requirements for certain majors, which I'll go over later. At the center of Seattle U's academic experience is the core curriculum with an emphasis on rigorous contemporary courses. The core is comprised of 12 classes taken over four years. These classes are, are truly designed by faculty members who've used their expertise to shape the content of each class. And the curriculum really invites students into engaged learning about themselves, their communities and the world. The honors program provides highly capable, highly motivated students the opportunity to join a cohort of students who enroll in a series of interconnected seminars centered on the liberal arts. We recognize one size does not fit all. So for this reason, the honors program offers three distinctive tracks to accommodate students' diverse interests and collegiate aspirations. Through our pre-major studies program, you'll find the support you need to embark on your educational path. We don't like to call our students undecided because there are plenty of subjects and things you're all super passionate about. So with that, our pre-major advisors are there to support you as you enter college and help you declare a major by the end of your sophomore year that still has you on track to graduate in four years. When you arrive at SU, we wanna make sure you're finding your home away from home. And to help with that, we have over 150 student clubs and organizations that range in focus from professional development, community service, cultural heritage, identity-based groups, honor societies, and um, outdoor recreation. Some of our student clubs include our KXSU radio station, our indigenous student association, our newspaper called The Prospect, our Black Student Union, our Japanese Student Association, there's so many to name. Um, another note as well is that students are required to live on campus for the first two years, and it's a really exciting time. And you have learning communities and you get to experience uh, what living on a floor with a ton of people is like, and it's a really exciting time. Uh, let's see, we wanna also ensure you find a community where you feel at home to help find your passion, your purpose, and the people you can build these connections with. We have an array of cultural and identity-based groups so students can join and find that special place on campus. 
I do want to chat a little bit about the holistic approach we use to application review. So just know when I'm reading your application, I am not laser focused on your GPA and your grade trend. I really take everything into consideration. We're going to work along the circle here, starting with academic rigor. Your rigor just shows us what classes you're choosing to put yourself in. Are you challenging yourself a bit and taking those difficult courses, the APs, the honors? For grade trend, we want to see your consistency during school. Did you have a dip in your grade sophomore year because you broke your arm and you couldn't write, we encourage you to reach out to tell us those things because we really can take that into consideration when reviewing your application. Our middle GPA is around a 3.4 to 3.9. Um, we all, so far we are all test optional, which is great because there is no advantage or disadvantage in submitting your SAT or ACT scores. Next on, the next on the circle here, we have our major prerequisites. These prereqs will be critical for students that are interested in programs that are math and science heavy. The prereqs do vary from major to major, so I encourage you to look into the major you're curious about to find out more info. The last three sections in our circle are all sections within the Common App. Leadership and activities is a place to tell us everything you're involved in outside of the classroom. For the essay, we're already getting all the things you're involved in, so be sure to tell us something more about you. This is one of the only places we can hear your direct voice, and that's really what we want to hear. For the last section, the letters of recommendation, we ask for a letter from a teacher and also a counselor. Our annual cost of tuition is around $67,000, and I recognize this is super intimidating. With that being said, 92% of students on campus are receiving significant aid. And if you have any other questions, I can definitely answer them in the chat. But this six minutes went by way too fast. Again, you have my chat in the, I mean, you have my information in the chat, so feel free to shoot a message in the chat, shoot me an email. I'm always here for y'all. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your night, everyone. Thank you so much, Seattle University. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to welcome Montana State University. All right, thank you all for joining. I, my name is Hallie and I am an admissions counselor here at Montana State and I'm super excited to talk about Montana State University. I'm gonna cover a lot of different information, but right off the bat, I wanna start talking a little bit about Bozeman and the area that we're in. So we can learn a little bit about not only the university, but also the community that you may potentially be joining. So here in Bozeman, we really are a college town uh, with 60,000 people, and that includes our student population. So we have the amenities that a larger community in town would have. So we've got your Target, Costco, Starbucks, Walmart, we also have a really close tight knit uh, community feel with our downtown area. So there's a lot of arts and culture as well as MSU community events that are put on uh, in the downtown area. We also have a very outdoorsy active community here in Bozeman. So we are about 16 miles away from our local ski area. So we've got skiing, hiking, biking, fishing, uh, snowshoeing as you can see in the Picture. So we really have the best of both worlds here in Bozeman with that uh, college town feel, but also the outdoor opportunities. Now talking a little bit about academics and MSU in particular, we are a mid-sized university. So we have an enrollment of just under 17,000 students, but we're primarily an undergraduate institution. So uh, we only have about 2,000 graduate students here. And if you wanna be really particular, we have 14,688 undergraduate students. We do have a 50-50 breakdown of in-state and out-of students. We are have students representing 48 of the 50 states, as well as 69 different countries. So we do have a diverse population here at MSU. Uh, we have support and academic resources uh, for students that a smaller university would have with an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. We also have a ton of opportunities for students to be involved that you might have at one of those larger universities. So we do have over 300 different clubs and organizations here on campus. And those range from fraternities and sororities, athletic clubs, religious affiliations. We also have a sandwich making club if that's something that you're into. So there's really something here for everyone here at MSU. Uh, we also have a lot of spirit with our NCAA Division I athletic teams, as we don't have any professional teams here in Montana. So our uh, college sports really uh, dominate and are popular. 
Uh, in terms of academics, we are an R1 top tier research institution classified by the Carnegie Foundation, and we're the only top tier research in university in our region. So all of our students participate in research in their four years, and it looks different for every student. I majored in sociology, and it's not all just being in labs and uh, wearing lab coats. Some of our students have participated in research. For example, our architecture students have built tiny homes across Montana for low-income families, or our business students get to partner with uh, local businesses in the Bozeman area and develop social media marketing plans for them. So research really looks different for every student. We also have over 250 different academic programs and areas of study here for students, as well as eight different academic colleges. We are a land-grant institution, so uh, we have an, a rolling admission basis, so we don't have any hard deadlines as well as no priority commitment date. So there's no date where you have to say that you're officially coming to MSU. I like to joke that our application process is probably one of the easiest applications that you will fill out. It takes students on average about 20 minutes to complete. And really all we need is your self-reported high school GPA, some academic background information, and a $38 application fee. And you'll hear back with an admissions decision within two to three weeks. All of our students are, our students are automatically admitted into MSU if they have one of these four uh, admissions requirements, a 2.5 cumulative GPA, rank in the top half of their class, 22 ACT or an 1120 SAT, but we are test scores optional. So those are not required for admission to Montana State University. We also will offer a lot of scholarship opportunities and financial aid opportunities to make enrolling at MSU affordable for everyone. So for out-of-state students, we have our Achievement Award, which is a merit-based scholarship based on your self-reported high school GPA. We're also part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. And then we have several other scholarships that stack on our merit-based scholarships, like departmental scholarships or CAT scholarships, as well as accepting the FAFSA. Uh, we are test scores optional again, so test scores are not needed for scholarships consideration. And more info about our scholarships is online um, at montana.edu slash scholarships. Uh, but that was really quick. Uh, just to wrap up, uh, we do offer in-person as well as virtual visit options um, five days a week, Monday through Friday, eight to five, all year round. My contact information is also on this slide and I'll put it in the chat, but feel free to reach out with any questions that you may have. Also follow us on social media at admissions MSU. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with your college search. Excellent. Thank you so much, Montana State University. I'd like to invite all of the, um, the admissions reps who are here this evening to come back on camera and rejoin us. I have um, just a lightning round of questions and hopefully we are able to get a couple of them in. Um, so, uh, Tell us, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start with Western Washington when you're ready. Yeah, so my advice would be twofold. So one, keep your options open. Look at a lot of different schools, different programs. If you have no idea where to start, that's okay. Just see what's out there and you can start to weed them out. Well, I liked this aspect, but I didn't quite like that. So I'm not looking for a school that has X, but I'm looking for a school that's more like Y. It can help you better narrow down what's important to you in a college just by seeing the huge variety of what's out there. And then my other piece is reach out to your admissions counselors. Uh, we are here, so it's great that you're already here. You're kind of doing that stuff already. But if you have any questions, you know, make sure you're popping into those um, personal Zoom rooms to ask questions, emailing us, calling us. We absolutely love to talk with you. Uh, I like to give a piece of advice that's more on the paperwork slash organization side of things, and that's to absolutely stay organized. Uh, I recommend to my students to apply to your top three to five college choices before Thanksgiving, um, and just so that you can roll into the holidays not having to worry about that part of the process, um, or it leaves you time open to be able to celebrate with family or fill out some scholarship applications. 
Also, if anyone is asking you that question of what are your plans after high school or where you're going to college and you don't have it figured out, you can at least say that you've been um, applied to these top three places and you're waiting for accept letters and financial aid award letters to make your final decision. Um, then you sound like you know what you're doing um, on that part. But yeah, stay organized, apply early, enjoy the holidays. <laughs> I got to echo what everyone said so far. Um, my piece of advice too that I would add is um, we don't force ourselves to fit into our clothes. So we shouldn't force ourselves to fit into like the perfect ideal mold of what a school is looking for. So I always encourage my students, to, like if one thing doesn't match up, you're not going to like end up growing to love it. And if it doesn't feel right at the beginning, it's it's not meant to be and that's okay. You know, there's so many different paths to life and gosh, I've been meeting so many amazing students in Spokane and it's just really opened my eyes to different pieces of advice that I can share and just take your time, you know, and it's just a moment in time. <laughs> I would definitely have to reiterate what everyone else has said, but definitely when you're going through the college search process, choose the college that is the best fit for you. Ultimately, we as admissions counselors and admissions staff want you to go to the school that is the right fit for you and is the best fit for you. Um, keep your options open, but you know what is the best for you ultimately at the end of the day. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Um, my next question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? You could start whenever you're ready, Western Washington. Ooh, that's a good one. There's a lot of things. I think one of them is that the process is very, I'll say cold and more clinical that we only care about the numbers. It's only GPA and how many AP classes you take. It's not. I think from seeing all of us here today, you can tell we are not cold people. We are very warm. We want to help you. And we're not trying to get you. I mean, yes, we'd love for you to go to our school if that's the right fit, but we're not trying to make you go to the school that's not going to work for you. So um, yeah, it's not as scary as it might seem. I know it can seem like an overwhelming and intimidating process, but it doesn't need to be. And we just want to help you through it and make it as easy as we can. Uh, my myth or the thing that I like chat with students about a lot is you do not have to have it all figured out yet. You're 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, you don't need to know what you want to do with the rest of your life uh, or even have some of those different parts and figures figured out. Um, that's part of the college experience is exploring those options and seeing what's out there for you. Um, so not to let that part stress you out. And then also the, the list of like top 10 questions or whatever to ask college reps. If you do not care about acceptance rate, don't ask, <laughs> like those kinds of things. Um, you can tailor those questions to what's important to you and what you're looking for. Um, so kind of a twofold. <laughs> Gosh, that is a tough question. But yeah, I would also I would like to piggyback off of Julia's. I always tell my students that like, I yes, I work for at Seattle University, but my passion lies with helping students and making sure they're on the right path and just answering their questions. So if you reach out to me and you're like, hey, could you read this, my opening paragraph for my essay? Uh, yeah, I can. And I'll give you any feedback or comments that I'm able to, um, because we're here to support you and help you. We're all here, for all of us working as admissions counselors, we're here to support you as students and we wanna see you succeed. Yeah, again, I would just have to reiterate and what everyone else had said, um, some really good points. I definitely have to agree with um, Brianna on, you don't have to know exactly what you want to do with your life. Things change and that's a totally normal process. You might think that you know exactly what you want to do or where you want to go and that, that might change. So definitely just keep your mind open to all the possibilities. I'm going to give Montana State the opportunity to answer first on the on the next question. <laughs> Mix it up and then we'll we'll um, do Western Washington uh, right after and then it'll 
proceed in the same order. Um, ooh, let's see. What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Thank you. <laughs> one thing that I want students to remember about Montana State University is that there's really something for everyone here at uh, MSU, whether you're into the outdoors or not into the outdoors or you're into athletics or not, there's something for everybody. And we really just want to make MSU your home and make you feel like you're part of our community. Ooh, that's a hard one um, just to pick one, but I think, I would have to say one thing that I would want students to really remember is something that stood out to me when I was a student at Western some time ago, and that's the support from our faculty. We are a mid-sized university, so we do have a lot of those research opportunities that larger universities have, but it's not as difficult to get involved. We really have our faculty available. They're at Western because they want to teach at Western. And then research is also something they do, but teaching is that priority. So there is really great support from our faculty on campus. And that's something that is really helpful when you're a student. Uh, for Western, I would have to say that if you, or Western Colorado University, I should say, um, if you are thinking of going out of state, and again, especially to Colorado, we are a really affordable option for you there um, on that, um, that looking out of state and growing your wings. But then at the same time, we're on that small side as well, uh, really connected faculty, connected staff with our students. Uh, that it is like a home away from home. So while you might be far, you um, are finding your own spot on the Western campus with those connections as you're going. For Seattle U, I would have to say that what I would love for you all to take away is that if you come here, you're not going to just get an education in the classroom. You're going to get educa an education for all aspects of what makes you who you are. And it touches on every aspect of your emotional well being, your physical well being, and your mental well being as well. So that is my best, that is the biggest takeaway I want y'all to take. And yeah. Thank you for such great advice. And, and uh, just, I think helping to make the, the college application process seem a little less scary. Um, so hopefully all the students here today uh, benefited from the advice you shared. Um, I'd love for students to get an opportunity to hear about each of your schools a little more. And I know you all have some Zoom links to be able to share. Um, so if you want to go ahead and drop those in the chat now, um, students feel free to um, copy down the Zoom links that are posted in the chat um, so you can hear even more about each of these schools. Uh, again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our reps and thank you to the students who are here this evening. As you close out of this session, there is going to be a quick five question survey that we'd love for you to take. Don't forget to sign up for more sessions and to stop by um, one of the sessions from one of these amazing reps. Um, and the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash Spokane. Everyone have a wonderful evening and hopefully um, we'll get to, to see you all at another session. Thank you, Vanessa. Bye, everyone. I just give people.